Mario again coming at you with another video and as you can tell from up there it is time for another WWE pay-per-view related video um, just ahead of time in case you're wondering why I'm not speaking as strongly as I normally would like the last episode I'm recording this early morning everyone's still a little asleep and to top things off uh, it's raining outside and kind of windy so if you hear like banging you know coming from one side of the room that's the reason why I was waiting a while to see if it would let up, but nah, it's not going to let up. Anyway, last night was WWE TLC Tables, Ladders, and Chairs. Uh, thank goodness that they dropped the whole stairs thing, because that was a stupid gimmick last year, but I digress. Overall, I'd say the pay-per-view was entertaining. More or less than I expected. I mean, had a couple matches that kind of stood out, a couple filler ones, but... That's what most of these pay-per-views are, I mean, except for maybe WrestleMania, but even then a couple of them do come across as filler. Only match I didn't watch was the pre-show match. Didn't have the time to get around to doing it, I had yard work to do. But uh, Sasha Banks defeated Becky Lynch by submission. Then we get to the pay-per-view proper. Uh, the New Day retained the tag team titles against the Usos and the Lucha Dragons, as I thought they would. And... Uh, I actually started the pay-per-view a couple minutes late, so when I started, the New Day were already in the middle of their promo, and it was a typical New Day promo, but still entertaining. I actually don't remember off the top of my head anything they said during it, but, you know, it's the typical New Day promo that they do. Instead of something about Save the Tables now, they were saying something about, you don't need ladders. Then I think they were doing something about other stuff, but... Oh, and I might be confusing their promo last night with what they said on Raw, but... Anyway, the match was pretty decent. There's two spots I remember in the match specifically. One is when, I think it was Kalisto did his finishing maneuver to Kofi off the top of the ladder. That was a good moment. If I remember right, I believe they went out of the ring through another ladder. And then another one when Kofi got his head rammed into another ladder. Those are the two memorable spots of the match. And of course, the whole match, except for the finish, Xavier's on commentary, and he's very fun to hear on commentary, and of course, like usual, he corrects any of Cole's mistakes, you know, automatically, like, you know, I guess he called someone, oh yeah, he mistook uh, Kalisto and Sankara, and he's like correcting them, that was fun. And then, of course, at the end, when it looks like the New Day is going to lose the tag team titles, Xavier is like, it's no DQ. And he gets off of commentary, gets the trombone, runs into the ring, and throws it. If I remember right, I think it was either Kalisto or Sin Cara who was climbing up, stops him. Then one of his partners gets up there, tosses him off the ladder, and gets the tag team titles, and the New Day retains. Like I said, it was an entertaining match. It was a little less than 20 minutes. You know, it's a long match, so forgive me if I don't remember everything, especially with the rest of the pay-per-view, but those two spots I mentioned were the memorable ones of the match. Then we got Russo, Rusev with Lana defeating Ryback by submission. I, like, like I mentioned in the last episode, I haven't been watching Raw, so the story I haven't been keeping up with, but thankfully on these pay-per-views, they do those recap videos for some of these matches. And following it, I'm like... Well, Rusev really has gone downhill since he lost his feud with Cena. At least they still have him with Lana. But it's like, you go from the Bulgarian brute who doesn't really seem to care about Lana, you know, like how he is right now, and actually gets mad if she's the one that cost him his matches, to now he really cares about Lana. Well, I guess they have to have a story for him somehow, and getting him involved with Ryback, I guess, is good for the temp thing, but he's just not going to capture whatever spark he had before. Unless they somehow change his character and make him like that. He's just a typical monster heel that, you know, once he goes against Cena, it's all downhill. But the match was what you would expect from these two. And Lana got involved in the finish, which caused Ryback to lose. And it is what it is. It just felt more like a Raw match or pay-per-view filler match. Then Alberto Del Rio defeated Jack Swagger to retain the U.S. title in a chairs match. Out of all of the stipulations you could have used, you use a chair match, I have never gotten the point of a chair match. 
I mean, a tables match and a ladder match, they at least make sense to have their own stipulations, because a tables match, you have to put your opponent through a table to win. Makes sense to have it. Ladder match, you have to climb a ladder and pull the title or whatever else off the top. But a chairs match makes no sense. Might as well just call it a no DQ match and be done with it. It's not like you actually have to beat your opponent with a chair ten times to win. That at least would make sense. Oh no, that would be logical. Anyway, this was a match you would expect from these two. It was entertaining and decent. Swagger got a decent reaction when he first came out. And Alberto retaining the title is more or less what I expected. Swagger was just basically a filler opponent for him. And I don't know what they're going to do with Swagger after this. Probably nothing. Because before this one was the last time we saw him on Raw. At least that I can remember. Del Rio, they're probably going to have him keep going forward against an opponent. Especially since he's a part of this League of Nations faction. Uh, the Wyatt family defeated Team ECW in the 8-man elimination tables match. Only one member of the Wyatts got eliminated. And if I remember right, it was Harper. And then after that, every member of Team ECW got eliminated one by one. If I remember the order right, it was Rhino, Devon, Dreamer, then Bubba. And this was, you know, what you would expect from a tables match. It was entertaining. And uh, probably one of my favorite little moments was at the end when Bubba is the last one in. When he gets the table up and goes under the ring and he pulls out some lighter fluid. Well, when I saw that, I'm like, you know, lighter fluid, are we going to get a flaming table? Nope, we didn't. Instead, well, right before he could light it, he gets attacked and he gets put to the table and the Wyatts win. I, do, I also liked when Tommy started going under the ring and started pulling out all the toys. He pulled out the garbage cans, the garbage can lids, the kendo sticks. And there was a moment where Tommy and Bubba are beating, I believe it was Strowman with the kendo sticks. And then another moment where they bury him under tables, that got a chuckle out of me, especially since they started with a giant table that had Strowman's name written on it, which I, I wonder if I'm the only one who thought of this when they saw that table. It kind of reminded me of a few years ago when Big Show was in that one ladder match, how they had to get the extra large ladder for him. Well, we got the extra large ladder, now we got the extra large table. If I remember right, I think there was also an extra large chair at one point. And of course this all goes from the extra large WWE title belt they made for Andre that he never used, but no, all we need now is an extra large kendo stick. Then Dean Ambrose defeated Kevin Owens to win the Intercontinental title. Another good match. I uh, was wrong on who was going to win. I thought they were going to keep the title on Owens, but with how the match progressed, having Ambrose win made sense. And Owens, you know, like I've said before, he's always good in his heel role, and this match was no exception. At one point, he almost retained the title by count out, but then Ambrose got in at the last moment, and of course, the finish thing, you know, they're both going for their finishers a couple times, they keep sliding out, and then eventually Ambrose hits Owens with dirty deeds. And one thing I liked is that at one point, it looks like Ambrose was going to win, then Owens gets his one finger on the bottom rope. It almost looked like there might have been a miscommunication with the ref there, but the ref, you know, did stop the count. It's not like he counted over and had no choice but to end the match there. If he did, at least no one would have something to whine about in his heel promo. But it was an interesting thing, though I'm probably not the only one. I know I'm not the only one that notices actually is that the commentators, it was King who was complaining about it. He's like, oh, you just got to stop it for one finger. In the kayfabe rules, that's the point. You get any body part on the ropes, it breaks the count. Funny that King is the one complaining about that, but then again, I guess they had to have one of them complain about it. But having King do it is weird. It would have made more sense for Cole, but then again, then again, I don't think they'd have Cole say it, and I know they wouldn't have JBL complain about it. But having King complain about it is just weird. And of course, having Ambrose win the little celebration after the match was good for him. And it's good they actually have Dean get a meaningful win for once. That was the reason I was going a little back and forth when I did my predictions on who would win. Then I thought, yeah, Owens probably winning would be better. But like I said, I don't mind Dean winning. It just makes me wonder how they're going to go forward with this. Are they going to continue this feud? Hopefully they do. I hope they don't trade their title back and forth like I'm, like quickly. Like Dean loses the title to Owens at the Royal Rumble. If they do that, they should. If they do that, they should probably keep the feud going and have Dean win it back at Mania. But that's just my thoughts. But who knows what they'll do? 
hopefully Dean does have a meaningful title reign and unlike his US title reign actually defends the title despite the paperwork uh, Charlotte retained the Divas title with Flair in her corner against Paige and the match was yeah, it was okay for what it was uh, I actually got into it more than I got into their last match and of course I love the finish with Flair pulling the one Flair distracting the referee while Charlotte pulls the rest of that to turnbuckle thing off and then hits Paige's face into the turnbuckle corner and that was the finish when was the last time we <clears throat> excuse me when was the last time we even got a finish that involved the turnbuckle corner I can't really think of one so it was a breath of fresh air uh, Paige did hit Charlotte with her finisher at one point but she didn't kick out of it Flair put Charlotte's feet on the bottom rope and forced a rough, rough stoppage that's a good way to protect a finisher is have someone on the outside interfere and you know get involved that's a good way and of course after this led directly into the finish and I do like the page was complaining to the referee about Flair like what are you gonna do Flair did that Flair did that and then of course it's after the match Flair and Charlotte celebrating and of course the Flair acts after the victories I can understand why he's, the commentators brought up that Flair seems to be living vicariously through Charlotte at least in the storyline makes sense and I do like that they're starting to turn Charlotte slightly heel We'll just see how she goes with it. And of course, Paige originally looks like she was going to be the heel. Now I guess she's supposed to be like a... I wouldn't use the phrase hardcore, but edgy face to a point. We'll just see how this feud continues to go. Because with that finish, I know they're at least going to try to get one more match out of it. Then we had the main event, which went 23 minutes. Sheamus and Roman Reigns in a TLC match for the world title. And Sheamus retained the title. That was more or less what I thought it was going to be because... I don't think they would have Reigns lose the title that quickly and then just put it back on him at the next pay-per-view. If anything, they're going to wait to the Rumble or if they can stretch it out, Mania, but we'll see with that. This was the type of TLC match I expected out of these two with the no blood rule. And it was a pretty good brawl between the two of them. Uh, they, I like that they didn't actually start going for the title early on in the match. It wasn't until later they started doing it that made the match feel a little bit more like a fight between these two. I do like at one point that Reigns did a spot that was basically a Superman punch with a chair. That was cool. And then Sheamus did a white noise through the table. And one thing I noticed about Sheamus is with how light his skin is, you could really see some bruises starting to develop on his skin during the match, especially on his left arm. And of course at the end of the match we got interference by Del Rio and Rusev, which I kind of figured was going to happen, but I'm probably not the only one thinking this, but where the hell were the Usos and Dean Ambrose? At least with the Usos, you could kind of make the argument they're still beat up from their ladder match, so they didn't come out. But Ambrose just had a match two matches ago. You would think he would come out to help his buddy. But no, he didn't come out. What was he doing? Still partying in the back? Or would uh, interfering on behalf of his friend cause too much paperwork? But anyway, Sheamus retains the title. It was a quick little finish, and I did like that Sheamus was contemplating. Should I deal with Reigns or should I get the title? Now I'll get the title. That was a smart little thing, because who knows, he could have lost the title. And after the match, Reigns gets super pissed off and starts beating the crap out of Sheamus with a, with a chair. Now, this is the Reigns that we should have been having the last couple months. So Reigns is not going to take any crap like this. And then, of course, this led into the end of the pay-per-view, which I'm actually glad I didn't turn the pay-per-view off right after the finish, because I would have missed this part. Triple H and all the referees come out, and Triple H is like, what are you doing, Reigns? Reigns stops for a minute, and Triple H is like kneeling down, you know, you know, trying to help Sheamus. You know, Sheamus is his buddy-buddy, so, you know, he's going to want to make sure he's safe. And Reigns is on the other side of the ring, just standing there. And as he's standing there, and Triple H is examining Sheamus, you can see the wheels in his head turning. And I do like, before he does anything, how it does kind of a close-up, and you can tell by the look on his face what he's about to do, and he just doesn't give a shit. Reigns attacks Triple H and lays him out, hits him with a chair a couple times, if I remember right. I think he does hit him with one Superman punch. Then he takes him to the outside, power bombs him onto the table, the announce table, the Spanish announce table, obviously. It doesn't break. Then he goes on the regular announce table and jumps on him from it and puts him through the table. And I like during all this that Stephanie's screaming. She's screaming like Triple H is getting murdered, which added to the whole this. And just, I just love the expression on sh on Roman Reigns' face and just how all well this went down. I actually am contemplating watching Raw tonight. 
we'll just see I know we'll just see if I actually do get around to it or if you know my work shift you know puts me off wanting to watch it but I am interested to watch Raw even if only for to see how this rain storyline continues and it seems with this whole thing they're gonna try to make rains a little bit like Stone Cold you're never gonna really recapture Stone Cold there's only one Stone Cold but you know taking a few notes out of that playbook that could work especially with how Reigns' character should be you know a guy that goes up there and kicks a lot of ass but we'll just see how this goes overall like I said the pay-per-view was decent nothing really truly memorable we're not from years from now people are gonna remember it other than probably Reigns beating the crap out of Triple H maybe a couple spots in the ladder match but that's about it 